Hi, and welcome to lesson 12 in our phases of matter unit. This is gonna deal with what we call the combined gas law, which I put up above here so that we can all look at it. One thing you may notice is that it combines the last three gas laws that we've talked about in our previous three videos. That's exactly what it is. The combined gas law is a combination of Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Gay-Lussac's or Edmonton's law put together. As a result, we can now investigate the changes in any one of these variables as the others change from an initial state to a final state. Let's go and take a look at how this works. The combined gas law is on reference table T. It's actually the only gas law given to you on reference table T. Since it combines Boyle's, Charles's, and Gay-Lussac's laws, you actually don't ever really need to remember any of the individual gas laws because they're all given to you within the combined gas law. This is gonna make our life a whole lot easier. First, we don't actually have to remember the three individual gas laws, right? It's all just turned into one giant gas law. Second, any variable that's held constant can be ignored. And if you do that, you're able to recover the individual gas laws. For instance, if we were to hold temperature constant, we can get rid of that. We then know that P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2, which if you remember, is Boyle's law. It works that way for Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's law. This is a fantastic thing. Finally, the only warning that I really need to give you here is that you absolutely need to make sure that your temperature is in Kelvin. If you use Celsius temperatures in the gas laws, you're going to wind up with a big problem pretty quickly once you have to deal with negatives or zero degrees Celsius. Now that we see the combined gas law, we can talk about how to solve any gas law problem we're ever given that deals with pressure, volume, and temperature. The first thing that I want you to do is get rid of the words. Go into the problem and take out each of the variables from the paragraph. Get P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, and T2. Once you have those, make sure that your units are acceptable. Are you using Kelvin temperature? If you're given Celsius temperatures, you're gonna to have to convert. Also make sure that your units for initial and final states agree with each other. Don't expect that you'll get the problem to work if you're given an initial pressure in kilopascals and a final pressure in atmospheres. You have to convert from one of them to the other so that they both agree. Once you've done that, you can rearrange the combined gas law to isolate the variable that you're solving for. You can then substitute in your numbers, solve your problem, round it as needed, and you're all set. Once that's all done, you can party, rejoice, because you know how to do any gas law problem. Let's take a look at an example. This is from page 16 of our Unit 3 packet. A 2 liter sample of your gas at 300 degrees Kelvin and a pressure of 80 kilopascals is placed into a 1 liter container at a pressure of 240 kilopascals. What is the new temperature of the gas? Pause the video, take a moment and see if you can solve it, and when you're ready, let's move on. So, step one, I'm going to pull out my variables. The initial pressure is 80 kilopascals, the initial volume is 2 liters, the initial temperature is 300 degrees Kelvin, the final pressure is 240 kilopascals, the final volume is 1 liter, and the final temperature is unknown. My temperature is already in Kelvin, so that's good, and my units for pressure and volume agree for my initial and final states. Since everything's changing, I'm going to have to use the full combined gas law. Let's plug in our values. P1 times V1 over T1 is equal to P2 times V2 over T2. In this case, T2 is by itself. Rearranging this equation so that T2 is by itself, I get that T2 is going to be equal to the product of 300 degrees Kelvin times 240 kilopascals times 1 liter divided by the product of 80 kilopascals times 2 liters. This is just cross multiplication and division, isolating the x variable. Let's do these mathematical operations to understand that our final temperature is going to be equal to 72,000 divided by 160. And so when we do that math, we get a final temperature of 450 degrees Kelvin. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. Thanks so much for watching this video on the combined gas law. Take a moment here at the end and make sure that you can do the following. Make sure that you can use the combined gas law to solve problems where pressure, volume, and temperature are all changing. Also make sure that you can modify the combined gas law to recover Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Gay-Lussac's law when relevant conditions are kept constant. You can just eliminate that condition from the equation and just solve the equation using the variables that you have, and you've done what you need to do. If you can do those two things, you're doing great. If you have any questions, take a moment and write them down. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.